Hello and welcome to this video. As a part of analytical method development, many developers consider pH or organic strength of the mobile phase as the critical separation parameters to achieve the desired goal. But uh, the temperature is not considered as that important and temperature is only been considered maybe at the end of your method development just to understand a little bit impact of temperature variation on to the resolution or maybe sometimes retention time. But do you know that you know the temperature can also be a good resource for your required separation, resolution or retention? Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to provide an absolute clarity on various technical topics. Today, we are going to talk about something called as HTLC or High Temperature Liquid Chromatography. So what is the meaning of HTLC? When the HTLC can be used and at the last, we will also talk about some of the limitations of HTLC. So let us begin with the presentation. So what is high temperature liquid chromatography or STLC? The high temperature liquid chromatography or STLC in short form is a term which refers to any separation carried out at temperatures above room temperature, typically within a range from 40 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius with a mobile phase in a liquid state. You must have used gas chromatography at such high temperature. But very few times people utilize the temperature into the uh, HPLC method development. So in case if you are using the temperature above room temperature during the method development, then you can think of using an HTLC. So why this HTLC technique is important and why you must consider an HTLC for your next experimentation. The first and foremost, the STLC will help you to reduce the column back pressure. See, we all know that the column back pressure is the limiting factor for HPLC analysis and that's the reason there is an UPLC or UHPLC. In case if you are uh, working with very high viscous uh, organic solvent like IPA or some to some extent methanol, higher temperature will help you to reduce the viscosity of those organic solvent and then uh, you are going to get the lower column back pressure. So reduction in the column back pressure is very much possible with the higher temperature and this increased uh, temperature which eventually going to help you to reduce the back pressure will help you to increase the, the, the flow rate of your mobile phase. So that way you can have the shorter possible detention time and as you are operating at the lower column back pressure, your life of the column will also get increased. So let me show a diagram on one experiment conducted. Uh, I have taken from one of the, uh, the scientific research article and you can see that the pressure is been getting dropped from, uh, for example, 4500 PSI to closely around 2500 psi. So with the increase in the column temperature from 20 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius, you can see a significant drop in the columns back pressure. I hope this is going to be an advantageous fact for you in case if you are getting limitations because of the column back pressure. So this application of a temperature can also be a good point in case if you are working with the smaller column, uh, smaller particle size columns like 3 micron or 2.5 micron or 2 micron. So especially with this column uh, packagings, you will always end up getting the high column back pressure. So temperature can be a best aid in reducing the column back pressure. The second important uh, point why you must consider the high temperature liquid chromatography is the reduction in the retention time. The higher the temperature 
the faster the exchange of the analytes between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. And because of that, you can expect the reduction in the retention time. Now again, these chromatograms can represent, show you how the change in the retention time takes place with the increase in the temperature from 25 to 30 to 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. But one has to be also cautious about the resolution aspect. As long as your resolution is not getting compromised, you can certainly think of increasing the temperature. The next important point is the reduction in the tailing or overall improvisation into the peak shape. A significant increase in efficiency with temperature due to kinetic effects and improvement in the mass transfer. And this will lead you to the decrease in that peak tailing or improvisation into the peak shape. In case if you have the secondary silanol effect, now that secondary silanol effect can certainly get minimized with the increase in the temperature. So for basic compounds, the increase in temperature can be an idea to reduce the peak tailing. Another important point is the reduction in gradient re-equilibration time. In case if you are using the gradient run for your chromatographic separation, re-equilibration always going to uh, bring the loss of time and efficiency. So how you can reduce this re-equilibration time? And uh, in this case, the temperature is certainly going to help you. Let me show you with the two different examples or two different solvent. Now, this is the example of a mobile phase containing acetonitrile. You can see that the temperature has actually helped in reducing the re-equilibration time. Similarly, in case of methanol, you will find that there is a some amount of reduction into the re-equilibration time. So, these are the reasons why you must consider the temperature during your method development. But having said that, there are certain limitations of the HTLC uh, technique or the high temperature liquid chromatograph technique. What are they? Let us understand one by one. The first one is the lack of commercially available instruments equipped with ovens which can reach a very high temperature such as 200 degrees Celsius. Now, this is the limitations. We do not have such instrument available in the market. And that is the point probably can stop from conducting the high temperature liquid chromatography. Second important reason is the, the stability of the stationary phases, especially the stationary phases which are uh, bonded silica stationary phases are having a lot of limitations on to the uh, temperature. Some stationary phases may not withstand beyond 80 degrees Celsius something like that. So that is the second limitations of HTLC. Also the instability of some uh, molecules at higher temperature. In case if your substance is uh, temperature labile, I think HTLC may not be the best choice in your case. Also the complexity in uh, physical chemical property change like pK value can get changed with the change in the temperature. A major problem associated with the HTLC analysis is the need for some additional tubings in the instrumentation. And if you add some tubings in the instrumentation, your extra column volume can get increased and that will further lead into the band spreading or the peak dispersion. Again, the heat transfer in the liquid is very slow as compared to those in the gas, right? So it takes a some amount of time for equilibration of the temperature also and if the temperature is uneven probably your separation your retention time will also be uneven or unreproducible and last but not the least heating of the massive amount of steel associated with hplc columns can be also too slow so these are the reasons which probably can limit from using the htlc However, you can certainly think of using the temperature gradient program into your existing HPLC system. You can also think of combining this uh, temperature gradient program with the flow uh, gradient program or with your mobile phase gradient program. The combination of the another gradient programs like flow and uh, mobile phase will get certainly benefited 
by the temperature gradient program. I hope you must have found the presentation helpful. This will help you to utilize the temperature programming during your HPLC method development. I would like to read your comment in the comment box below. Thank you so much.